Hey, what's up guys? Hope everyone's having a nice evening. We are officially wrapping up November and I wanted to take some time to talk about collecting 1920s U.S. coinage. Out of any decade during the 20th century, the 1920s have got to be the toughest, okay? And like I had alluded to at the beginning of the video on that little ver uh, blurb, the title of this video, the, the primary reason why these coins are tough to collect, especially in higher grades, was what we in the industry call as a survival rate. Not a lot of you are aware, okay, especially a lot of the newer collectors who were born after the year 2000, and the numbers of you out there are plentiful. But to give you a little bit of a history lesson, the U.S. was mired in between this, like, crazy abstract kind of surreal um world in the u.s uh the the u.s was in the great depression if you can imagine scores of people lining the streets either trying to find a job or score their next meal for themselves and their family and they were there every single day and it just wasn't happening okay as you can see from the uh, fantastic 1920s era image that I posted up there in between those two standing Liberty half dollars it was such a scene um, to this day it, it you know it, in the 1920s you had people all over the streets in every major city you name it Today, you, you could even fathom people. Basically, the populace was homeless and they were desperate, which therefore reflected on the coinage. So, if you guys had pulled out a price, price sheet or a red book and you examined 1920s pricing or mintages, okay, it's, it's a, an interesting decade to say the least from a coinage perspective because a few of the dates have extremely ridiculous low mintage numbers and this could be attributed again to the sign of the times of the 1920s the u.s mint did not need to mint extraneous coinage when people had a hard time making the money all right so when i when i alluded to survival survival rate Coins much like that 1923 Walking Liberty half dollar on the left side of the screen was the typical. People were constantly change, exchanging this monetary device over and over again until they were worn slick because the U.S. Mint was not producing any more coins because of the Great Depression era. You know, and the world was in between two wars, okay? World War I had just concluded, all right, which put everybody, put everybody on the streets, essentially, until World War II came around, and it reintroduced tens of thousands of jobs, <clears throat> excuse me, to, uh, to produce everything. And that's when, that's when mintages of coins skyrocketed, was in the late 30s, early 40s. At the onset of World War Two, <clears throat> so examples much like the Warren example of the 23s that you see on the left-hand side. This is what's readily available for us to collect and for us to find with relative ease in the neighborhood of 25 to 30 dollars. Still a lot of money, considering the comparable 1942 Walking Liberty half in BU routinely sells in the 20 to $25 range. So one, that's in VG condition to sell at about $30 says a lot about the collectability of these this specific era. The BU example of the 23S that you see on the right hand side of the screen is an example that was sold through Heritage Auctions at one point in excess of $10,000. And it wasn't even that great of a grade. 
it was like a mint state 63 or something like that as you can see it has a few bag marks and nicks and stuff on the coin but nonetheless this is this is a BU example that somehow some way had survived through all the chaos during the 1920s does this pose an ex an interesting set direction it sure does 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 the low mintage and everything else kind of disqualify it from being a collectible decade no not really I mean you could put a really nice VG set together for uh, for a reasonable amount of money now you get into things higher than a VF and, and you're asking for it um, for those of you that come across coins like these in nice condition and you're looking to sell anything from the 1920s I would say all the way up to 1929 um, be sure you get them slabbed authenticated um, if you're going to a coin shop at least know how much you expect to get from them from a gray sheet wholesale perspective and then you know you should be okay uh, these coins are widely sought after today uh, they're they're right up there with like 1860s Civil War coin coinage and um, they're just going to keep going up. The, the less and less of them are scooped up and held on to, uh, the more expensive these are going to get, even in those lower grades. So, uh, it's a fantastic direction if you opt to do so. Again, leave yourself enough money. money. Don't, don't jump on the first example you see if you do collect anything from the 20s. Go for the best grade you can for the money. If you had fifty dollars to purchase on one coin, do not just go out and buy a you know a nineteen twenty three S that looked like this. When uh, you know maybe you could go after that Lincoln cent from like nineteen twenty nine in a BU. So, anyways, I got, I hope you guys enjoyed this video again talking about coinage of the nineteen twenties and how uh, challenging it can be. Uh, if you guys have questions, comments, go ahead and post them below. If you haven't subscribed to Blue Ridge Silverhound, please do so. Um, you know, when you subscribe, you'll gain access to the newest content as they're made available. I want to thank everyone for joining in. You guys have a fantastic evening and uh, enjoy the holidays. Take care.